so um, here walking now in uh, Somerset heading towards the Quantock Hills though we're not quite there yet so um, Exmoor uh, behind uh, us um, here today with uh, Rob Beckley who is the former um, Chief Operating Officer of the College of Policing and um, le the, currently the lead for uh, Operation Resolve um, which, uh, Rob, probably better than I ask you to um, say a little bit more about your own background, if you wouldn't mind, and, and something about Operation Resolve, um, uh, subject to... Uh, there is an active court case, so we... Um, the, the, the facts are nothing more, I suppose. Yeah. Yes, well, it's... I, with a shock um, last month, Bernard, it dawned on me that I've done 35 years in policing, and, and I remember when I was brand new I used to look ahead and think look at those old men and you know beginning to look when well, you know definitely fit the mold now um in policing but and and given I'd done work overseas for a few years before I joined the police um it does make me very feel very old but but I, I've done everything a bit of everything in policing I mean I've uh, operationally investigations counter-terrorism and um uh, and and also policy practice and standards so uh, you know, I feel very privileged to have a, a fantastic career. Um, uh, and then I had retired, and literally a few months after retirement, had the approach that would you be interested in picking up the investigation into the events that took place at Hillsborough 32, uh, yes, <laughs> uh, 32 years ago. And I, I, um, I thought about it and thought, actually, what an interesting, you know, it's a bit of our policing and, and societal history. Just um, watch your step there, because yeah, we are yeah, heading down a, you are right. uh, a, a slight I, incline with div with, have, with bumps. Have no fear, Bernard, I will sue you. It's, uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, I, I need to take care of you. But anyway, yeah, sorry, I interrupted yeah, you, so, just so, for your own safety. So I, I, I now run um, in charge of operations. I'm appointed as an assistant commissioner to the Met, but seconded to the Home Office to, to lead the work, and have had, at some point, 200 staff. Now I'm, I'm down to a handful um, finishing on, on, of our reports and supporting the IOPC in their current court case. But it does mean that there's little I could really talk about Operation Resolve until the court case is over. Yes. Albeit, you know, one of the things I've always got my eye on is what lessons are we learning? Where, you know, what can we take away from this? And, and, and a point that, that you and I have discussed in the past is, is resourcing and running these big national investigations uh, is a major Operation challenge. Resolve is far from, you know, the only such uh, case. Let's make our way through the style yes, here. And, yes. um, so, you know, many other significant um, um, operations, the one that immediately comes to mind, um, in my mind at least, is Operation Steak Knife, which is looking at circumstances in um, Northern Ireland. Yes, and so, uh, um, and there's been um, stove wood with the National Crime Agency and... and oops, dive over yes, um, we have to do a bit of juggling here over, over obstacles. Magenta into, um, <coughs> into the Gosport Hospital. Uh, uh, yes, death. absolutely. Um, you know, big, significant... You know, when you peel away into something historical, it's, it, you know, it's, it's an extraordinary effort because... Um, you, 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 you know, it does require really good detective skills, but also organisational skills and and judgment about what standards were and yes, and how how you can really make a view of what should have been done in the day. It's it's a fascinating job, uh, you know, uh, um, a marvellous career end, I think. Um, to what has been an interesting career. And so, um, just developing that thought further, so what, what would you say, um, your experience of um, Operation um, Resolve leads you to believe might be done differently in terms of constituting future such um, operations? Yeah, I certainly feel we, the, the police service, when, when they set something like this up, Operation Resolve or any of the others, Yes. Uh, you you grub around you 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 try and pull together a team and and you really get people you know beg steal or, or borrowed from different forces yes and you know we're we we should be able to pull together 
um, a cohort and have a cohort, not a standing army just ready to do something, Yes. Um, but, but certainly be able to professionally provide uh, for these big operations and these major investigations, um, some of which might last for years. So, uh, you know, there needs to be a capacity and capability. Um, and, and also, certainly, there's a lot of experience and knowledge now in, in the investigation process of things that happened many years ago. Operation Hydrant has really set a high watermark on some of that. So, you know, there's a lot more we could learn about and share about investigative techniques and, and managing the victims and the families. Not managing them, it sounds like you're trying to control them. Working with them, yes. understanding their needs. Um, really important and so fundamental to the work that I've been doing. Well, look, we've come to a, a fork in the footpath. And of course, at um, this point, it's, it's important to try and establish where we've got to go. I think that's going to therefore be a left. So here we are, the um, uh, wonderful uh, Ordnance Survey, saying that we're a little off path and we need to be more down to the left oh, gosh. there. So we have strayed slightly in our yeah. conversation. But there's fortunately the style here. Let's yeah. take the style and see if we can yeah. rejoin the designated um, route in a moment or two. Yeah. As we um, all have our phones. As we well, all perhaps. have our phones. Yeah, uh, Technology is so <laughs> wonderful, isn't it? Um, do you want to hop over the style? Yeah, th this one here, we're going this right. way. Yeah. Um, I don't intend that um, there be a news item that, that uh, says that... Um, <laughs> Uh, the Operation uh, Resolve lead has, has gone missing in deepest yeah, yeah. Somerset, so uh, we will... Um, I, I'm not sure they're going to miss me that much. <laughs> the, um, back in your slightly earlier career, um, 2011, um, you were, I believe, the gold commander on for Avon and Somerset at the time of the then Bristol riots. Mm. Um, yeah. Now, of course... Um, that there has been disorder, not just in Bristol, um, but, but other parts of the country for yeah. Yeah. A, a number of, of reasons over the past handful of months. Um, do, you, do you look at the um, circumstances and the, the policing arrangements and the response um, nowadays and, and think, actually, there's lessons that um, were available in 2011 that you know, perhaps need revisiting. Yeah, uh, well, 2011 was a fascinating time. I mean, Bristol's a fascinating place. I was a deputy at the time and, and picked up the command for the riots there. But we'd had a year earlier riots when, when there was an effort to open a Tesco store. Um, and um, and it, was, it was a proper disturbance then. Um, so Bristol's got quite a, a, a sort of history of... of this civil disobedience in it, and it actually goes back many years you know uh, uh, back into the 17th 18th centuries as well so so it's a it's a it's a fascinating city um but when i was 2011 was a was a week in a way we had the benefit of seeing what was bubbling away elsewhere in the country and and particularly london and and i, I think with we're all rusty with public order because it happens irregularly and rarely and so uh, when it happens we're all having to get our relearn and, and rethink and get ourselves into the groove um, and uh, and I do think you've seen a bit of it now you know because it is a, a decade since the yes. those riots yes um, and we are fortunate we don't have much uh, disorder of that sort and it will happen. That's the nature of our societies. It will happen. Um, and so, certainly, my experience and my learning was was uh, move in quickly. Don't you know? I, I I'd seen it seen very static lines in London and decided that m my approach was going to be very dynamic. Um, uh, there's stuff that actually I, I I'm not sure the tactics are, would be ho would wholly meet. Um, the right standards now but certainly the using dogs uh, 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 we used very liberally and kept people out of the city center uh, and then when fires were burning and cars burnt out uh, we sent the fire brigade in at three in the morning to clear it all off the street so it didn't become a, uh, an attraction to others the day after um, and so quite 
Let me just divert yes. you this way a little because I think ah. now we've probably re yes. re rejoined. <laughs> Actually, no, not oh, not quite, but we do yeah. we do need to. You're multitasking. I, I am multi. I'm trying to um, multitask here. Um, actually, Dad, this this way should be should be fine. Sorry, I interrupted you. No, there. no, no, that's right. No, I, well, I, I think I made the point that I, I think I think um, keeping it. Um, you, you, uh, no, got... no, sorry. This, this, <laughs> we are. <laughs> no, we will get there. So, no, no. I think you, you've got. You know, one thing about any public order, you've got to be very clear, decisive, and absolutely um, uh, keep people on their toes if they're going to, to to cause problems. But of course, then you've got to think about if you chase them, where do they go? What's the, you know, the, the, the contingencies around it are so dynamic. Yes. So mistakes will be made. Um, it's, it's, you know, I, I think given we do it so rarely, we don't do it badly, but, um, but it's, a, it's a challenge when we do. And, and um, one of the, one of the um, reasons a, a year ago for disorder related to Black Lives Matter and uh, the, the death of George Floyd, um, the, the court case there recently, in the states being resolved. Um, you're just checking the room. Yes, well, I have actually. You I'm can just, listen to uh, the question I'm at the just, same time, hopefully. Um, actually, I wonder. I think we do. We want to be. Yeah, a little we've further now, over there. I think if we go that, right down to the bottom, we're, we're actually cutting across. Now. Okay. So we need to go there and then come round past Nettlecombe. So we would have gone round the top there. Okay. So. But we get down so, to. We yeah. get down. Let's just have a look. Yeah. Down to Nettlecombe and a bit of a steep incline here, but. Uh, and then round. Round past the house, or round in front of the house, and then join. teamwork. Yep, I, I think very important. <laughs> um, so um, the yeah. the connection I wanted though to make, um, and um, it, it was was relating to um, the, um, issues of of race, um, not just in society but also in, in policing, and um, how um, how policing. You know, policing is not yet. A, as d diverse a community as society as a whole. No. Um, uh, not just in ethnicity, but in gender and in, in a number of other ways. It is, it appears, mm. getting better. But um, what, um, what thoughts do you have on, yeah, on that sort of it, area? It, uh, I, I've lived with race issues now for most of my career. I, I, I say that I worked overseas before I joined the police. I came back from Africa. I spoke a bit of Arabic. I, I tend to get drawn into work um, that involved different ethnicities in, in policing terms, you know, because I get called up. I started at Kensington, I used to get called up to deal with any Arab issues that you um, were, were bubbling away, of which there were quite a few. Yes. Um, and so I've always had an interest in, in the cultural side of policing both internal and external. And um, I took a job after I'd been an inspector a few years, I, I took a job at Scotland Yard and I was responsible for race issues in the Met. I was the Preeb McPherson, yes. I was it. Yes. Um, and subsequently I've led the work on prevent, um, set up the first prevent policy in, in policing. So I, I've been very immersed in it. I wrote the first hate crime manual uh, in policing. I, I did a stop and search review. So I, I've lived with the issues and I, and there's no doubt police have, have moved on a long way. The overt racism that existed uh, when I first joined, and it was overt at times, very overt, was, you know, it is, is not non-existent, but it certainly won't be apparent to someone like me, whereas it would have been in the past. Um, uh, but do I think there's still structural or institutional racism? I do. Um, I think if you just look at the definition that McPherson drew up, it is, you know, there's almost like no way we, we're not institutionally racist. Now, some colleagues understandably don't like the terminology and it, it's very pejorative. It's it's it does put uh, make people think I'm not racist. Well, of course, it's not about them. It's about the way the organisation thinks and operates, and 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 its own internal cultures that that exclude and make life more difficult for others. And and I think it exists. Um, uh, what we have to do is recognise that, and then 
all of us constantly ask ourselves in what way you know can we can we um, identify it and what can we do constructively to 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 deal with those race issues um, uh, and, and we owe it to not just yeah you know, we owe it to our community but we owe it also to uh, those who no, well, just society. Yeah, we, society we, we, to, we to, it, but also it, to those in the in the service to be able to give the best service. Uh, so, yeah, absolutely. So, so, uh, so there's a training need there. Um, to because um, you know, um, in, in in my experience. Uh, uh, not that that's necessarily the best um, um, judgment, but 99.99% um, .99 of um, police officers, police staff, those in the policing community wants to do the right thing. Exactly. Um, yeah. Unfortunately, there are yeah. the rotten apples. But so well, there is. I, a... I, I, I don't wholly subscribe to rotten apples. I do see behaviours becoming a norm. So stop and search is a good example where where some forces have no culture of stop and search and others it is writ in their dna and and you know um uh, and when it's written in their dna you know stop and, you're judged on how you do your stop and search you get you know, it, it's it's used less rigorously less yes. less focused and the evidence base is very clear if you go into a very defined area where the problem is very clear stop and search works as a general means of crowd control, almost, you know, societal control, it has more detrimental effects. You know, use it wisely. And, and, and I still think that's a lesson for policing that hasn't always landed. Use stop and search very wisely. It's a, it's a very powerful tool, important tool, but it's not to be used as a sort of general means of control of the streets. So, one of your um, responsibilities um, was as the Chief Operating Officer of the College mm. of Policing, um, a, a, a body that is relatively new, relatively speaking mm. in, in policing terms, um, tasked with um, a, a number of responsibilities, including training, including research yeah. Yeah. Uh, and the like. Again, I'm just um, intrigued, interested in, um, as somebody who has worked in the college. Um, where do you think its key challenges are as, yeah, it, as it moves forward? I, I, the college was one of Theresa May's um, more positive reforms, and I don't mean to say that they were all negative in the bio means, but, but certainly it had real potential to, to establish standards. Um, I don't think it got there, and I'm part, you know, I was party to those debates and decisions that that uh, either put it on the landscape as the key player or not. Um, and I don't think it is now uh, the key player that it could be. Um, and there was one view so I... So what's, what, sorry to cut you yeah. across there, but so it's not the key v v v player it could be, so, but, but it should be, presumably. It should be. I, my, my view of it, and, and it, to be fair, I did argue the point in the college, but lost the debate. Um, my view was all the policy areas and the practice areas driven by MPCC and ACPO, should be under the wing of the college. So the wing, the college, in effect, ensures there's consistency across the board, ensures that, there's, that, that it's communicated collectively and appropriately, that, that it's, it's evidence-based as far as it can be. And I think, and everything, all, all the, the mass of material that emanates from what used to be ACPO is now the MPCC, I think, needs to be uh, of... Uh, pulled together and not so much controlled as as managed in a very professional way and the college was the right entity to do it with leadership from MPCC I do see to see and others not just MPCC so I did see the idea that you have leads for topics and subjects could continue but I felt we missed our opportunity to take all that standard setting because that's what it is uh, it is all standards, uh, how you get guidance and how you're going to work and, and make, it, put it, make it rigorous, consistent and evidence-based. We, we missed that opportunity we, and, and, and now in the policing environment, MPCC remains the, the preeminent player. Um, you know, it's good, I, I admire all those involved, I, I get on very well with them, but I think the college missed its opportunity and and you know i was part of that um, maybe still the opportunity there to to, to have um, yes now, now this is the most beautiful route and yes. um, not only 
the beauty around us, but actually the beauty underfoot. I, 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 thought, you, I thought you were talking about me there, Bernard. <laughs> I, I, um, <laughs> well, um, I, I prefer to admire the view, yeah. shall I say, the, the, the scenery around us. But um, the, um, it's not just, of course, policing's responsibility to um, make sure that society is uh, well protected, well, yeah. well overseen that, that the disadvantaged, um, the vulnerable, those yeah. who are yeah. uh, um, exploited in some way are protected. Yeah. Um, I, we, we were talking earlier on about the, the sort of wider community responsibility, yeah. by which I'm not just talking about individuals. I'm mm. also mm. thinking here about um, in fraud, for example, yes. where yes. Um, there seems to be uh, amongst the finance um, industry community a feeling that uh, you know it's crime it just you yeah. know it's a cost it's not actually something that off, yeah. there's, there's no responsibility yes. that they yeah. feel they the banking yeah. and yeah. the finance community feel to really really tackling the growing challenge of, of online fraud yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. so um, what's your thoughts well, on that? Well I, I th I th I'm quite passionate about the idea that We've set and established in the UK health and safety uh, laws. Better make sure we don't. We get might just over. yes. There's, yes since there's a car we, we will approaching, should we just pause here for yes, a moment? And whilst... Otherwise, health and safety will become an well, issue. Well, but... yes, it's nice and red, <laughs> so it's very apparent it's heading our way. So um, we can let it pass, yeah. and then we can continue. Yes. Uh... Yes, uh, I. I... Um, health and safety is established now in all organisations and all industries, uh, private, public, creative, third sector, whatever. You, you know, a failure to meet appropriate health and safety standards uh, and seek to minimise the harm uh, is is you know in our is, is now absolutely accepted. Well, people rile against it. You know, there's at times when it's. Uh, you know, don't you know? We can't do that because of that. But the principles are well established. Well, I think there should be an equal duty of community safety. Um, if what you are doing is causing harm, you won't always know it. But if it's apparent there's harm being caused, then then I think there's a duty on all organisations and individuals to to do something about it. And 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 so you know, you, you mentioned fraud. Yeah, you know, absolutely. I. I you know, when the Moldavian banks was stolen of a billion pounds, it came through shell companies in the UK, in Bristol, as well, some of them as well, and and was was filtered through. And yet we, so we know we got shell companies being set up. Then actually, the the authorities need to be saying, what's my duty to ensure this is being done for genuine purposes and and not being exploited. You, you can look into, you know, we local authorities. Well, there's a lot of good work with local authorities. They don't always have that same duty, even the community safety duty from the Police and Community Safety Act, all those, you know, 1998, fails to put a degree of leverage on our partners. And I think they should have that leverage. Everyone should be, should have a concern for community safety and preventing crime or harm. Um, and uh, and I, so I think our framework is still very immature in that. And, and you know, there's lots of issues around it, lots of caveats and concerns. But a, a, a duty of community safety is one I would passionately advocate. So uh, just recently, um, uh, Andy Cook, the former chief constable mm. of Merseyside, now um, uh, one of uh, Her Majesty's uh, 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 inspectorate. Yes. yes. Uh, in inspectors. Um, he was quoted as uh, if he had this this mythical five billion pounds. Yes. I think it might yes. have been yes. that one billion might have gone into policing and and four billion into other um, diversion activities. Well, I'd be in the Cayman Islands straight away. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> and, I, and, and I suspect that uh, there would be bo there would be uh, bodies here that would be straight yeah. after you yeah, as well. Yes. So. So my advice would be not. <laughs> um, um, but the um, one one of the the things that struck me during my own career has been um, the the importance, the, the the essential 
even uh, need to uh, those that are going a bit astray in their very early life um, another car coming along yeah. so let's just yeah. allow them to um, so, the, so the youth diversion side mm. you know, those that whose, whose circumstances um, uh, may not be perfect far from perfect mm. whose um, you know who, who need um, merit support not just for their own sake mm. but for society's mm. sake mm. Mm. in terms of uh, deterring them what uh, you you know youth, youth diversion is is a key area you, yeah. you have an interest in that yes and, and I, I do think um, you know you, you, you mentioned about you know that that five billion pounds I, in a way Andy it's interesting it was picked up because I think mo many cops would agree, you know, policing's got to be funded, you've still got to have the capability and capacity. But let's try and prevent it ever happening in the first place. Let's, you know, I would invest greatly in teachers. Um, I, 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 ironically, you know, we've got a big uplift in policing and we're taking many more people into policing with the, with the money the government has provided, which, you know, you're, you're not going to look at that gift horse in the mouth. but. My goodness, we're taking people from teaching and other key professions and, and well, you know, there isn't a hierarchy of professions. I would say, you know, we, we, you know it, it's, we mustn't rob Peter to pay Paul here. Um, so I, I do feel, um, you know, that our investment in youth is critical and both, you know, supporting those coming through as well as diversion um, of those who are at risk. Um, and, you know, youth services, they've been decimated. Um, and I, when I was a sergeant at Brixton, some of the best work I did in the community uh, was with the youth workers. Let's, let's just pause here because this, um, we're coming up to a B road. Yeah. And um, I just think, let's, let's pause here yeah. for a second because that's pretty much covered the ground uh, mm. that I was keen to mm. rob. Uh, other than one... Um, uh, question. Uh, before we started uh, the the conversation today, um, I asked you whether there was a charity. So I'm I'm walking, doing a fair bit of walking over the coming mm, months mm. Um, under something called that I've called the Policing Friendship yes, Tour, yes, yeah. and I'm hoping that this will help raise uh, funds, money for ch various yeah, charities, yeah, policing yeah. related charities. And I asked you whether there was one particular charity yeah. you'd like to see yeah. in some way supported. Well, well in, in the sort of theme of what we've been discussing, I mean, there's, there's one I was introduced to a couple of years ago that I, I greatly respect. Uh, in fact, the High Sheriff at the time had um, promoted it, was uh, Somerset um, Crime Beat Trust, which I think, you know, is very much around 13, 14 year olds, ensuring that they're not at risk and at harm and, and, and have the opportunities. Actually, if I'm honest, I had and many of our generation did. So I would absolutely uh, support that one. Recognising as you go around the country, you're going to have many of these charities. And so it's my job in Somerset to try and make sure that one's promoted. Well, but <laughs> hopefully the number will grow and hopefully people will see fit to, um, uh, to chip in. And, yes, and, yeah. uh, um, it, hopefully it'll raise some, some money for the charity. Yeah, yeah. But Rob, look, this is just the most glorious day. Um, mm. We're just outside Nettlecombe Court here. We've another, what do you think, three, four hours walking ahead um, of us? Uh, yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> the, and then I thought we'd do a loop. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. <laughs> um, there's the road ahead for yeah. us. Yeah. Um, can I just thank you it's so much? It's yeah. been yeah. wonderful to talk. Yeah. And uh, yeah. onward we go. Excellent. <laughs>